Katamari Damasi, let's make it inside a blender. No bullshit, no introductions, nothing. By the way, this video is sponsored by Shortform. I'm gonna talk about them later. So, uh, to make a Katamari Damasi ball, basically if you haven't played this game, you have a bunch of shit inside a sphere and it rolls around. Uh, what we need to do is we need to generate a lot of models. That's step one. I'll show you how to do that in a new kind of innovative approach. Um, and second of all, we need to put this in a ball that has the correct physics and rotation and all of this. So if that sounds good, keep watching. So how do we like make a cone and a car and all of these things? Well, I told you there was a new Blender add-on called Dream Textures, or it's not new, but it has a new depth feature. If you haven't seen this, look at my other tutorials. This is the fucking tool that lets you make uh, kind of low poly assets at scale. So uh, if you haven't seen this before, let me show you the magic. So I'm gonna add a cube. This is kind of what I do every time for the demo. So I'm just vaguely modeling an air conditioner. So I'm saying, oh, this air conditioner is gonna have an extrusion here. It's gonna have an inset uh, here. You take all of this, you type in for the texture AC unit, and then in a uh, look dev mode, you hit a uh, project dream texture. What you are going to see in a second now is that stable diffusion, just start. There we go. Stable diffusion is gonna generate us a texture for this. That is an AC unit. Does it look perfect? No, uh, but you do more generations and it looks better and better and better. So this is what we're gonna do to generate our assets. We're just gonna do this at bulk. And uh, if some of these look a bit off, you can always go to the UV editing workspace and just kind of correct for this and just kind of scale it down in here. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfect because the whole point here is we're gonna be generating a lot of assets, okay? So another example is let's add in a plane. What's he gonna do this time, this madman? I'm gonna extrude it to give it thickness. I'm going to inset this. I'm going to subdivide. So this is just kind of a fast tutorial. I'm gonna run a two sphere command and I'm going to do one of these. This is what? It's a cone. Why does it not look like a cone? Because it doesn't have the texture. So uh, for dream texture, I'm just gonna run cone, project dream texture, and now we have a traffic cone, kind of a weird one. I think I want an orange one, and if it doesn't do that, I'm going to say orange traffic cone. And this will generate one that is in our specifications. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just getting something that roughly looks correct at a scale. So uh, you can see how we can generate models at bulk uh, using this technique. So I'm just gonna scale this down, position it here. And now we have a traffic cone. And really the name of the game is getting as many assets as possible here. Uh, I'm just gonna do a couple uh, to get kind of the general gist of this. So uh, let's do a donut. Cause what's a donut? It's, it's a torus. So I'm gonna make a thickened donut and say donut and project dream texture. Again, this is using a depth model. You know, blunder guru be damned. This is the way of the future. Um, okay. So I'm going to generate one more just for example uh, sake, but you want to keep uh, doing this. So let's say, let's say we also have a cylindrical object. Uh, this can be a soda can. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to bevel the top and the bottom. And let's say we have a soda can. It can be a general one, or we could say Coca-Cola and see if it knows what that is. I believe it should. There we go. So some very strange Coca-Cola hybrid with a handle. So something like that. And there we have our Coke can. I'm gonna make sure each of these are to scale. And let's rotate this one so we get the good side of it. And I wanna make sure each one has its object in its uh, origin, in its geometry. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna scatter a bunch of these, uh, put them inside a ball and roll it. So once you're happy with these models, you could do this with geometry nodes, but I'm just going to make a bunch of copies like this. Again, you can scatter using instances and all this. I'm just gonna make a bunch of copies. I'm gonna randomize the transform. So say randomize the X, the Y, the Z, add some random rotation and even some random scale. So uh, scale even, so it's a uniform scale. Some objects should be bigger, some of them should be smaller, okay? 
Once we have these, we just got to put them inside a sphere. And the best way to do that is with physics. So I'm going to join all of these together into a single mesh. Uh, why am I doing that? I'm doing it so when I add a rigid body, it's now applied to all of them. But if I now separate by loose parts, it will keep its rigid body thing. It will just be per object. So uh, for all of these objects, make sure again to set origin to geometry. This is going to make sure they react appropriately. And then finally, uh, for the physics, I want them to not fall, but to attract towards the uh, center. So uh, to do that, just go into the physics world tab, disable gravity. And for the uh, force field, add one in, uh, which is just going to make them float and kind of deviate away. I'm going to give this a large negative magnitude strength, uh, which is going to have them attract together into this kind of uh, sphere-like thing. Again, the more objects you have and the better you texture this, uh, the better it's going to look. Once you're happy with this, get rid of the force, take all of these, join them into a mesh, making sure that you have a root object. So now we can join them into a mesh. It's going to be a thing. And uh, since I tried to record this tutorial last time, let me make sure I saved it. It crashed last time, so I wanna make sure it's saved. Uh, I'm going to, does it still have rigid body? I don't want it to have rigid body. I want it to be centered, set origin to the center of geometry and set this to the center of the thing. So now we have our Katamari Damasi ball and I want it to rotate, but it needs to rotate in this kind of jagged uh, way and all of this. So. Uh, that is a case for geometry nodes. So in geo nodes, I want this to transform, in other words, to rotate and to move based on a time function. So if I use my rotation and say rotate on the x-axis, we can do that over time. So here you can see it's rotating. And I also want this to be translating over time. And this is where it crashed last time. I don't know why. So it's rotating this way. I guess it should be moving on the y-axis in this case on the negative math multiply negative one. So it's rotating and moving in the same direction. Let's have it move a bit faster, if not faster. So it really feels like it's rolling. Again, what makes this look correct is it needs to be kind of rolling in a jagged way where it's using the bottom point as the thing, because right now it's just rolling smoothly. Um, so finally, uh, to do that, we just need to move this so it's always touching the ground. What that ground is, is it's always going to uh, change. So I want to transform this by finding out what the bottom uh, section of the mesh is. So I'm going to run an attribute statistic on this. I'm going to say, uh, look at the position, specifically the lowest Z coordinate. So position separate by X, Y, Z. Give me the Z coordinate minimum. And that is what we are gonna transform by on the Z axis. We might need to multiply by negative one. So let's see. You can now see it's rolling in a more jagged uh, way that makes sense. Um, I believe what I need to do is I need to multiply this by negative one. Let's see if that is correct. And now you can see it's rolling in a jagged way that makes sense for this ball. Uh, the reason you need it to multiply by negative one is we're first calculating what the bottom Z component is. It's gonna be some negative number. And I wanna say, don't move it down by that much, the minimum Z component, but bring it up by its negative. So if the minimum is down here, flip it and bring it upward so it's touching the ground. And this is how you get the ball to roll. And this could work with any number of objects. Actually with the simulation node branch, uh, you can now do a rolling thing where it actually gathers and accumulates objects and does this whole thing. Um, but I just wanted uh, to mention that. And now uh, this video is sponsored. So let's open this up. Uh, this video, as I mentioned earlier, is sponsored by Shortform. If you do not, if you do not know what Shortform is, let me fill you in. Let me give you a summary, uh, which is exactly what Shortform does. It gives summaries for books and articles that people are desperate to read. Um, things that are popular, usually like self-help books, philosophy books, stuff like this. Um, you no longer need to read these things in full if all you want to do is extract the information. Uh, Shortform gives summaries and 
explanations. It gives analysis on books and articles that are very popular. If you've already read a thing and you just want to refresh yourself or just kind of extract the key ideas, that's great. If you want to read a lot of books without reading a lot of books, uh, you can use short form for that. And uh, they have a massive collection covering all kinds of genres. I'm personally into philosophy. I'm into, um, I'd say, memoirs or biographies. And I'm also into, I guess, uh, self-help genre. Uh, so it has all of that covered. Uh, for example, one book that I mentioned before is Atomic Habits. Uh, this is a book about taking all your life and distilling it down to these habits that you can for uh, form. Can I do this one habit 1% faster, 1% better in all of these aspects of my life? And once I gather that all together, have I become a more optimal person? So it's about building these atomic habits and getting these tiny atomic optimizations. And uh, you no longer need to read this like multi-hundred page thing that can be distilled down to its core uh, values. So I would recommend that. And short form is always adding articles and books to their massive catalog. So there's never a wrong time to join. And uh, I have an offer for you. Let me read this off here. You can get five days of unlimited access and an additional 20% discount on your annual subscription for short form when you click my link in the description. So here you're going to say you're going to see a link in the description. You're want you're going to want to click that and then you can actually start reading thousands of articles and books and becoming smarter and a more well rounded person, um, which is topical for a Katsumari Damasi tutorial. Either way, uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something and I will see you on the next one.